you will be surprised at what my God will do. September will only meet you dancing, only meet you rejoicing, only meet you jumping as far as that matter is concerned. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we acknowledge that you are the only one who can change us. We acknowledge that you are the only one who can reveal your truth to us. We have come tonight to enjoy your presence even in this conference. Lord, we thank you for the truths that have come from the beginning of this conference even up until now. Lord, we thank you for the session we just had, mighty truths from your, your word. We pray that you bless our hearts tonight. Let your word come with power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. We'll have a very brief session tonight. Um, while I sat back and Dr. Lumide was just teaching on the kingdom, I just thought to take it from there. Since um, it is a kingdom conference, Conferences like this, as I would always say, are designed to bring us to more accurate understandings of the ways of God. It is true that many, many believers are in ignorance as far as the ways of God um, are concerned. And that is because, like he rightly said, there are two dimensions to the gospel. There is the gospel of salvation and that is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ man and creation being the object of that sacrifice so when it has to do with the love of jesus revealed through what we call the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus as proof of his love for man and then the entire creation it is called the gospel of salvation and you see in the communication of the gospel of salvation it is about the father and his benevolence and his love to man are we together and jesus christ being the mediator but now all that man does in the gospel of salvation is to believe that report and to receive by faith and the Bible says that if and when we believe that the life of God, what we call eternal life, becomes the blessing for believing that report. And then we move past that dimension of the gospel and we get to what the Bible calls the gospel of the kingdom. And like your pastor rightly said, the gospel of the kingdom is how believers become matured. When you teach the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus Christ is no longer Savior. He is King. Are we together? And those he died for are no longer sinners wallowing, looking for salvation. But they are now responsible sons and daughters in light. And the gospel of the kingdom is your communication of love and gratitude back to God for what he had done you see when you teach the gospel of salvation everything is all about what god did and you receive but now the gospel of the kingdom is your response back to the king now he is king seated and he has a desire within his heart there is a drive and it is your assignment to understand that which the king desires to see and to plunge your life and your destiny constrained by your love for him so most believers when we stop just at the level of receiving salvation and all of the rewards that come uh, as far as the gospel of salvation is concerned immaturity weakness and then um, we are never able to satisfy the heart of the king this is why conferences like these are designed to help us give us further enlightenment as to the matters of the kingdom so i'll just take maybe one or two thoughts for tonight and then we'll get to pray hallelujah let's start with matthew chapter 6 
This is Jesus himself teaching on the kingdom. I'll begin my reading from verse 9. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. In fact, when you read Luke's account, for, for time sake will not turn there, but Luke's account of this came as a response. The disciples said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And then Jesus began to caution them on a few things. And then we get to verse 9 here. He says, after this manner, pray. Now, we're not teaching necessarily on prayer tonight. But he said, after this manner, not by this recitation. There is nothing wrong with reciting it. But he's teaching you a protocol to prayer. He's saying, when you want to approach prayer that is effective in this kingdom, this must be your approach. Number one, when you pray, you are approaching Abba, Father. That your prayer must be patterned after a consciousness that the one you are coming to is Abba. Abba there is Father. It means source. It means sustainer. It means defender. So that when you come to God, you do not come to him as though you have plan B. Your approach to prayer must be that you are Abba, the only one who is able to hear, to protect, that all things come from you. Are we together? And then number two, he says, which art in heaven. So he gives you an information that even though the Father is everywhere, but that you are dealing with a God who is in a dimension that is not physical, that means faith will be required for that communication. Which art in a realm that is not physical and then number three he says hallowed be your name that means do not allow familiarity just because he is father do not allow familiarity to corrupt your understanding he says hallowed be your name approach him with the spirit of reverence as touching what he represents then he says when you are done past that the next port of call is thy kingdom come this is what i want to discuss briefly thy kingdom come he's teaching you how to pray so he says come to the father and that you come by faith which art in heaven and then you come with the spirit of reverence acknowledging him as touching all that he represents and then in making any request at all in order of priority that every time you have an opportunity to make any request, your prayer should be your kingdom come. Do you know why this is so? Because every other thing you are about to ask, you will need to ask it simply because the kingdom has not come. He's saying if the kingdom of God actually happens and manifests in your life, many of the things you would want to ask for, you may not need to ask for it. That the fact that you have many prayer requests, they are a report card that the fullness of the kingdom has not come. Because that when the kingdom truly comes, all that will be left in your prayer is worship. Because the kingdom has a character of making sure that there is no deficiency in your life. So please keep that scripture there. Thy kingdom come. Jesus now is teaching us that in all of your requesting anything from the Father, he says don't be foolish to just ask petty things. That when you get into a, the kingdom, a kingdom mindset, you ask him for the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom here represents the fullness of the atmosphere, the fullness of the culture and the fullness of the life of God at work. The fullness of the atmosphere. The fullness of the culture. And the fullness of the life of heaven. He says, pray that that atmosphere. Pray that that culture. And pray that that life. The very life of God. The very atmosphere of God. The very culture of heaven. That you pray that it superimposes your life. And then he says something very important. He says, this is what you should ask the Lord to do. Ask the Father that his kingdom comes 
and then he also tells you how the kingdom comes he said your kingdom only comes when your will is done there is an information here that you have to understand he tells us what is necessary for our excelling in the kingdom that it is the presence of the kingdom in our lives then he tells us what must happen for the kingdom to come he says that anywhere the will of God is allowed to find expression his kingdom must come there unrestrained and then he says that your kingdom come your will be done he tells you the location where that kingdom should come in earth not on earth in earth that earth being you first before your environment because you are an earthen vessel so he says as you pray let your prayer and your desire be that the fullness of the life are we still together the fullness of the atmosphere the fullness of the culture of heaven that it finds expression in your life this earthen vessel then across your territory so give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil i just request that midwife they, they are systems of God's mercy while you are waiting for the kingdom to find expression. Because when the kingdom truly finds expression, there will not even be a need to pray that other part of the prayer again. Are we together now? Yes. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil these are powerful components but he's saying god is more than willing to do those things for you but that his greatest desire is that you experience the fullness of the kingdom write this down please the secret to manifesting the kingdom the power and the glory of god is to know and allow his will to find expression in your life the secret to manifesting the power the kingdom the power and the glory of god is to know and to allow his will to find expression please someone say will one more time say will this is a word that if you do not understand then you don't know anything about the kingdom because in the kingdom everything revolves around the will of the king are we together now now in a democratic system of government is the government of the people by the people for the people so the will is centered around the people theoretically speaking are we together now so the people decide everything that happens but in the kingdom the kingdom should be a perfect reflection of the will of the king so if the king is a wicked person the entire kingdom reflects his will you can know how great a kingdom is or a king is by looking at his system of government around the kingdom are we together now yes in a true kingdom system your opinion does not matter it is your trusting the benevolence and the kindness of the king you are called into compliance and you are called into obedience not negotiation you negotiate in a democracy you can get up and be angry this was the mistake of vashti vashti forgot that she was queen to a king so when the king beckoned on her he wanted her to flaunt his glory that he was the king over 127 provinces the bible says she rebelled she had her own camp and she was enjoying herself she forgot that her honor was derived from her alignment to the king there is no mention of repentance in vashti there is no mention of her saying sorry she was banished simply because she did not recognize that in a kingdom everything centers 
around the wheel of the king. Now, you have to understand this because you see, Jesus in John chapter 21, when he rose up from the dead, he met Peter. Peter said, I go a fishing. And the disciple says, we go with you. And then they could not catch any fish. And then eventually they met Jesus. When they came to eat, he made a statement and he says, Simon but Jonah, he says, lovest thou me more than this? And he says, yes. He said, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. Then he made a statement. He says, when you are young, you are allowed to go anywhere that you would want to go. But that when you become old, someone will have to hold you and he will constrain you to go to the places that you would not even want to go. Jesus defines maturity there. That your degree of dependence is how you are matured in the spirit. Physically, the more you become an adult, the more people leave you to do that which you want to do. But he's saying in the spirit, the moment you are constrained by the will of the king, so that your life does not just revolve around your desire and your appetite, the act of giving up your appetite to take the will of the king is how you function in the kingdom. Now, let me tell you why many people cannot experience the power and the glory that this kingdom carries. It is true that we know that this kingdom is a kingdom of power and that there are multifaceted um, manifestations of the glory and the power and the grace of God. Many people desire to see the wonder-working power of this kingdom at work in their lives. The simple reason I submit to you tonight is that many people do not know that the necessary and sufficient condition to become an expression of the power and the glory in this kingdom is that you must go through a conscious test or a conscious demand of dying to your will and picking up the will of the king that your entire life is constrained to revolve around the will of the king that in this kingdom if at any point you are found with any agenda that is inconsistent with that which the king's de the king desires you are a rebel immediately whether as a businessman whether as a man of god so you do not define what you intend to do with your life the very character of the kingdom demands that you are dead to enter That when you get to the kingdom, it is the very life of God that resurrects you back. And then you now resurrect not to live unto yourself again. And information is given to you immediately. Number one, that this body is no longer yours. Are we together? That even though he still leaves you with the power to choose, but that there are consequences. You have a right to live your life the way you want to live. You have a right to make your choices ignoring the government of heaven. But he tells you there are consequences. Then he now, he now reveals to you the pattern for efficiency in the kingdom. That you must understand the will of the king and pursue the will of the king. In pursuing to see the will of the king find expression in your life, that is where your glory lies. That is where your relevance lies. Let me tell you this. The area of your life that is not yet manifesting the glory of God, that is the area you have found difficulty submitting to the will of the king. So if there is glory in your health, and there is no glory in your finances i can tell you immediately the reason why the glory of the kingdom is absence in your finances is because the will of the king as revealed as the pattern because you see the will of the king becomes a manuscript that guides our life we don't choose what we want to do what is in the heart of the king now it will be unfair for god to want us to know his will and then he's in heaven and we are here. So he gave us the spirit of God. He gave us the word of God. The word of God, even the ministry of the spirit of God. These are, these are provisions that ensures that the believer is never in the dark as to the will of God. Is someone following tonight? Let me show you a few scriptures.
until you know the will of this king and then find out what it takes for the will of this king to manifest in your life your life cannot be an expression of the glory of God Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 please let's start from there is God helping someone tonight so next time you say thy kingdom come and your will be done you will now understand what you are saying that is more than just a recitation found from scripture it says for I know the thoughts everybody say God is thinking I know the thoughts that I think towards you say yet the Lord that the thoughts that I think about you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end so number one God is thinking number two he's thinking of you and that there are things he's thinking of you about he's thinking of you to give you peace and an expected end are we together now very very important psalm 40 just a few scriptures very quickly psalm 40 from verse 7 and 8 psalm okay it says lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me Remember, this was a prophecy that Jesus came to fulfill. Please keep that scripture there. I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Why? Verse 8. It says, I delight to do what? So, Jesus did not just excel on earth just because he was Jesus. He found a formula that the secret of the glory of God upon a man's life is to find the will of God and plunge your life there. In finding and allowing the will of God to find expression in your life inevitably your life will reflect the glory and the power of this kingdom is someone learning Psalm 143 and verse 10 Psalm 143 and verse 10 he said teach me to do your will for thou art my God teach me teach me I know that my life, my excelling, the beauty and the glory of heaven, finding expression in my life depends on knowing and doing your will. In John chapter 4 and verse 34, John chapter 4 and verse 34, please read with me if you are a Christian, you see it projected, ready? One to read. Jesus said unto them, my meat, hold on, you know what that means? My meat means what satisfies me. My satisfaction and my fulfillment is derived from doing the will of him that sent me. That means Jesus never invented any agenda for himself. As soon as he became a teenager, he went to the temple. It was more than just a pursuit for spiritual growth. He kept checking through the scripture. What has been said concerning me that is consistent with the will of God. And he spent his entire life doing and finishing that. He has become for us the pattern man. Jesus is saying I succeeded and I excelled. Not just because I came from heaven. That the secret to my excelling. The secret to the revelation of the glory of the father in my life was that I was about doing his will. One more time, say will. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15. Is God speaking to you? Yes. <laughs> as simple as this mystery is, there are several believers who keep wondering why they are unable to see the glory of God and the power of God manifest in ministry, manifest in business and it seems as though God just handpicked a few people and is giving them influence, visibility. It is not so. We are all destined to a life of glory and grace but the condition, to the degree to which your life is found in the will of God, that is the degree to which the glory of God is revealed. You have to understand this. Now, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word there means accurately. Not as fools, but as wise. What is the wisdom? Next verse. We are reading to 17. Redeeming the time. Do you know what this means? 
That means anything you can do to redeem time, the Bible calls it wisdom. So if you waste time and time keeps going and you cannot justify the passage of time with purpose, the Bible calls you a fool. Are we together now? Please keep it there. It says to redeem the time. And one of the greatest ways to redeem the time is given to us in verse 17. Verse 17 says, Wherefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That means you can spend 10 years of your life doing everything you want to do and then God comes to mark the script and you will find out that in God's mind you are still 10 years from the last execution of his will you did. That's where your rating stopped. That even though there have been many activities including ministerial activities as far as heaven is concerned you stopped moving 5 years ago. And yet you are building houses and traveling, relocating and coming back. And God is saying, we only mark what is rest with respect to the king's will. That means any activity you ever find yourself doing on earth, if it is not consistent with the will of God, the Bible calls it the activity of a fool, that you are just wasting time. So when our works are tried by fire, it is tried with respect to the will of God. That means if God designs that at age 30, you should be a mighty man of God changing the globe. And at age 30, even though you are a sincere believer, but you are still in the church arguing about the principles of God, the Bible says that something according to the will of the Father, your life is in consistent violation to the will and the expectation of the Father. And listen to me. Satan... The allowance of Satan's dominion in our lives is to the degree to which we do not align to the will of God. That every time you are found in disalignment, Satan has a right to perfect your life. Is it in your Bible that he that breaks the hedge, you don't even know what that hedge is. Why will you break your own hedge? It didn't say he that comes to break your hedge. He that breaks the hedge your own hedge that means your immunity your protection your relevance is found to the degree to which you are aligned to the will of god now watch this let's assume your camera here zooming me is static it does not move watch this if the condition for my visibility is that i stand here within the jurisdiction of this pulpit are you following me now how many of you know that i have i have a right to choose to walk around so you will find out that I am absent you will no longer see me there and you will be wondering God but you you said that this man should be seen and God says this was the provision the condition for that visibility is that provided you stand here if the devil wants to come and shift that camera God takes responsibility because you are in his will please listen there are many things we claim in church that God, we will never get to see it. Lord, why won't you protect me? What you do not know is that everything that is supposed to be a blessing to the believer has a jurisdiction where it functions. It does not just function everywhere and anyhow. Protection, healing, influence, relevance. So one of the ways that I wish we had time would have gone to the Bible to check two dangerous doctrines. One of it is the doctrine of Balaam. One of it is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Uh, if we had time, I would have taught you what those doctrines mean. Do you know what they mean? Those doctrines don't destroy you. They teach you something that makes you destroy yourself. Because for as long as they called Balaam to curse them, there was a formation that God gave them that once you are in that formation, there is no enchantment and no divination that will touch you. And so, the only way is to do something to you that will make you go out of alignment to the will of the king. Are we together? This is why you find out that there is disparity in results in the kingdom. It's not like anyone is better than any. It's not true. It's not like there are some people, yes, there is the election of grace. 
but let me tell you everyone according to the authority of scripture the bible says we have been called with a high and even a holy calling there is nobody destined to be the one clapping for others we were all designed for the top however the condition is that in this kingdom if you must excel it will be a product of your ability to relinquish your will and you see when you relinquish your will you look like a fool except that your relinquishing your will is based on the revelation that his ways are higher than your ways when you give up your will to pursue the will of God, it does not make sense because it looks like God is a self-centered God. Why should I give up my beautiful life? So you call it based on what you know it to be. But until you come to alignment with the will of the king, then you will know the great plans he has for you. Abraham was living his own life and never knew that he was destined for the globe. He was a local champion having a few people in his house. And if you ask Abraham, Abraham will tell you, I'm happy with my idol worship at all of the Chaldeans, not knowing that there was a destiny for him. And then God calls him and he says, Abraham, the first thing is come out of your father's house. Come out of your experience. Come out of everything you have put to yourself and go to a land that I will show you. It does not have any name. Follow me. I will define everything as you are going. Do you know the risk? He didn't say come out and go back. He said start a journey. While you are going, I will keep talking to you. Let me tell you one of the things with the will of the king. He will never give you every information you need. He will give you sufficient to start the journey. So that you will depend on him for every part of the journey. We live in a world where people are obsessed with guarantees. Unfortunately, the way this kingdom operates, the guarantee is your, the revelation of the kind of king leading you. When David stood before Goliath, there was no guarantee. But he said, I know someone, the one who delivered me, delivered the bear and the lion. If he delivered these things, he would deliver this uncircumcised Philistine to my hand. Pastor, sir, I submit to you that there are many believers who are living their lives and the pattern of their lives are completely inconsistent with what God designed for them. There are many prophets today who are not near the place of their call. There are many people, the concept of the will of the king is a concept that the devil led us to push it out in church. Leave me, it is my life, we say. Let me do anything I want to do. Unfortunately, he will respect that. But make sure you are ready to take responsibility over the consequences. Because whatever initiates your journey is what will defend and protect it when any attack comes. When Satan wants to attack you, the first thing he finds out is whether what you are doing is in the will of God. Provided it is in the will of God, he cannot attack. Go to the book of beginnings and you see Adam. Satan kept coming every day, but he could not do anything to Adam. Why? Because Adam was at the center of the will of God. You, you, you imagine Satan coming. The same Satan that we're running away from. He comes around discussing with Adam. Adam replies him and doesn't pray about it. Why? Because his immunity was in the will. But when man fell through disobedience and disalignment satan had authority over him jesus who was the manifestation of the will of the father hear what he said satan cometh to me but does not find anything that means when satan comes it's not you he's looking for first there is an information about your state he's looking for to legitimize he's destroying your life are you in the will of god 